what I want to talk about is this concept of the digital nomad, which I'm not sure if anyone has heard of that term before, but effectively it means somebody who does digital work and moves <laughs> and uh, does that work from wherever they move to. So yeah, this after the pandemic, I think we're seeing a lot of people working from home, but we're also now seeing an influx of people working from anywhere because your home doesn't need to be the only place that you can work from. And when you're a freelancer, you have a lot more freedom over how you do your work. And that's kind of one of the benefits of that. So a bit about me. Um, so I'm a computer science graduate. I am a software developer kind of by trade. That is uh, what I do and that is how I freelance. Um, and I started doing that about four years ago, but um, I came straight out of university and I would say like, don't worry about that though, because not everybody does that. And a lot of the people that are in my network, um, that isn't necessarily the path that they came down, but it is, that is just what I did. Um, I think it's because I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. When I was little, I wanted to be a vet actually. Um, and I really liked animals. Uh, and I'll talk a bit about how that kind of works into my freelancing a bit as well. Um, so yeah, I went into contracting because I worked in permanent roles for a while and I noticed that um, every permanent place that I worked I would talk to people a lot and I would talk to them about um, their type of role and particularly the contractors just seemed very interesting to me like they had a different way of working they seem not to be as caught up in the sort of internal politics of an organization that they were working for which um, sometimes when you work somewhere for a while, um, that is one of the things that can be um, a little bit tricky or a little bit, um, for me, I didn't really enjoy. So one of the appeals of contracting was to kind of get away from that, but also um, to have more freedom over how long I was going on holiday or who I was working for a little bit more and, and sort of what projects I would do within that company. They just seem to have a lot more freedom. And I think that's, you know, initially my reason or my why for, for starting um, to do that. Um, so, yeah, I started working from home properly, like full time, I guess, working from home in 2020 in March, um, which is when the pandemic hit. Obviously, um, I was working for a company called The Guardian at the time. Um, and I worked for them for 10 months. That was how long my contract was. And I really enjoyed working there. And then it just so happened that every job that I applied for, or and I'll, I'll talk about how I kind of find work, but um, every job that I had after that, just it seemed to be like they didn't mind you being remote, although there was sometimes a, an option to go into the office that option seemed to disappear or be less relevant or coming up as much in, in roles. And I noticed that over, over the two years that I've been doing it. Um, and I started becoming fully mobile, if you like, or moving away from home in uh, 2022. So part of the reason I wanted to do that was actually my uh, the house where I was doing the work from the internet wasn't that great. Um, the Wi-Fi wasn't that good. And uh, I was living at home at the time uh, with my mother. And I just thought, actually, I'd quite like to be by myself as well. Um, I started to do a lot more outdoor stuff after uh, we were allowed outside. Um, and one of the things that I did was raising money uh, for charity, doing the Three Peaks Challenge. And as part of that, I went to Scotland um, and I just really liked it there. So I started to um, freelance all throughout Scotland. However, there's been multiple roles I've gone for and the discussion has come up in interviews, obviously, whether 
you know, if it's a global role, meaning that they've got offices all over the world or that the project work you're doing is kind of global, that they would be fine with me working in different time zones and things like this, which would obviously give me the option to literally work from anywhere. Um, and as I started doing that, I'll kind of get a bit more onto the sort of uh, frequently asked questions, but there's a lot to kind of cover as to how that works. Um, and I will happily take any questions. So is it like a quite a, still a new concept to a lot of people? So I think I've covered this, but um, I currently am working for two not-for-profits. So I said it's like a lot more flexible who I work for. And um, I actually got one of my roles through uh, SR2, which I think Reti was talking about. Um, and a lot of the of my network that and the people that I surround myself with, they're really interested in helping other people, uh, whether that's get helping them get a, a role or just helping them um, I think I've seen, you know, SR2 would have, uh, I think they posted something recently about um, someone who had my kind of skill set or a similar skill set to me that was needing a job. She was from Ukraine and, you know, we were having a bit of a networking thing there. And obviously we know what's happening there and why that's kind of quite relevant and important. So, yeah, I, I was really interested in eventually shifting the type of work that I was doing because I was just taking roles for not any company but um I was maybe not as concerned as what they were doing as to, as who the who I was working with which is still a, a major thing as well who what what team I'm working with even if I'm contracting or even if I am you know not a permanent employee it doesn't mean that I don't care very much about who I'm working with especially if they are other contractors or permanent employees it doesn't really matter um so for me I work now for a company called officers association um who help uh retired uh military officers uh find um work after their finished with their career in the military. And I also work for a Heritage Lottery Fund, which is a not-for-profit that helps get funding and grants for um, projects that uh, usually are to do with heritage sites or you know, areas of, it, of natural beauty and interest um, across the United Kingdom. So both UK companies, both Nonprofits, um, and I very much enjoy the team of people and the type of work that I'm doing there, probably more so than I have in a long time. Um, so yeah, I provide consultancy and or development services to them. And since working in that space, because maybe I'm, I'm not sure why, but maybe it's because I'm so passionate about it and um, the other people kind of, uh, can understand why I'm doing it and they understand that I'm very committed to doing that, that I have had a lot of contacts and work, other work kind of put on the table that's similar. And once you get into a space like that, sometimes, or a niche, sometimes that um, helps you to get the sort of similar work that you, you'd like to have. So... Yeah, I work mo mostly with recruitment agencies. As I said, I, I did work with SR2, um, but sometimes I also um, get people uh, that, I, that I've that i worked with or that are in my network. So previous colleagues, previous contractors or permanent employees who hear of work and they just think of me. <laughs> and if I'm happening to be out of a contract or interested, then obviously that can also lead to um, getting uh, contract work. So I think I covered this, but where I'm working in Scotland at the moment is a place called Alness, which is just above Inverness in the Scottish Highlands. I've worked, however, as you can maybe see in some of these photos, Glencoe and Fort William area I've worked in and Oban and various other really well-known places in Scotland. Anywhere there's a really decent internet connection, I will consider working there um so that is my main criteria and if i'm working for uk companies obviously i kind of want to stay in the same time zone but uh technically i could 
work wherever I like. I just choose to work up here because I'm I'm really into outdoor sort of stuff. And Fort William, for example, is like the outdoor capital of the UK or often coined as such. Um, so people often ask me, and obviously I'll open it up to questions, but people often often ask, like, isn't it expensive to like not work from home or to work from different locations or how do you do that? And uh, do you not get kind of lonely if you don't have, um, you know, a home environment <laughs> or something like this? Or um, I, I think that the rent most of the year is not more much more expensive than it was in the south of the UK where I was from. Um, the only cheaper option would be working from home, but obviously if the Wi-Fi is no good and I can't do my job as well, then it's it's irrelevant anyway. Um, being somewhere where you can feel uh, it's a good working environment is the most important thing. Um, and as well as good internet connection, obviously. And those things are kind of, it doesn't matter so much to me, the cost of renting somewhere, as long as it's it kind of works from that perspective. And actually, uh, no, I don't get particularly lonely. Um, and even when you are a digital nomad or moving around and you're always going to a new place, it's pretty easy to meet a lot of people. And I somehow managed to meet um, or get in with a group of people you know, we've got a WhatsApp group, which is full of over 100 people in there who are all, or well, most of them are, either they're wanting to be or they already are. There's over half of them already are digital entrepreneurs who either do a similar thing to me, like we have DevOps managers, we have um, Facebook and ad technologies, um, marketing, media, all, all of these kind of things. We even had a, a, a girl... Um, who was a she was a a model scouting agent so she it would be her job to kind of go to different places and find beautiful people effectively um and she would then run her online business which is like a social media related thing for models and do that remotely um so for me it's been actually I've met more people this way than I probably would in an office um and actually so I get to know some of them quite um quite well I'm I have some of them who are pet sitting for me um when I go away uh on holiday uh next month so that's been really good but also uh um when you speak to them you get a feel for the type of job you could do if you wanted to so maybe I don't want to do this forever or if I wanted to have some other freelancing thing on the side then it's great to have options and to talk to people um but it also gives them uh, the opportunity to know me and and sort of the option from, from my side as well we have different people speak we have uh, weekly meetings and different people speak at those meetings and I often try to find other networks of digital entrepreneurs and just find people in interesting locations like Italy or or just somewhere that's not the UK, probably, um, and just get them to go over how they ended up in that situation. Some of them have been doing this a lot longer than I have, um, and just kind of a bit about themselves and why it's working for them and what they found challenging and what they haven't. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of people come to visit me. I've had a lot of the opportunities come from doing this work. Um, I find sometimes there there is the option to, if you want to pet sit um, for people, if you really like animals, like I do, as I said, I like I wanted to be a vet. Um, sometimes people's um, homes have really good uh, Wi-Fi and they don't mind you being there alone, but helping them look after their animals. Um, so I've done that a few times and that's particularly actually right now, um, the next location that I'm going to was an Airbnb host whose dog I got along with particularly well invited me back to stay um, for free at the same accommodation. So that is, um, yeah, that's worked really well for me. And uh, yeah, I will open the floor to any questions. 
Thank you so much. Someone has asked, where is your next adventure? Uh, so as I say, I'm going back to somewhere I've already been before, a place called the Cairngorms in Scotland. It's central Scotland. Um, so yeah, I will be going there next. Amazing. Uh, someone has asked, is your WhatsApp group network private or is it possible to join? Uh, you can join if you want. I'm absolutely uh, available for, <laughs> I don't know how we pass on like details afterwards, but um, I'm sure we can do that and you're welcome to join the group. As I say, I'm always looking for, we, we've got half people that are already doing freelancing and, and another half that maybe are wanting to, so it doesn't matter and it's, it's not private as long as you've got the link to it, you can join. Oh, someone's asked, any thoughts about van life and security for computer stuff? Yeah, so I think it's a good question. Security um, and how mobile you can be. So I've heard of people working from vans. Personally, for my type of um, work, uh, even if you can get a very good uh, download speed, you may not get a very good upload speed. And because a lot of my work involves pushing code quite frequently to online platforms, I find that a van in particular, um, because that was another option or one that I wanted to consider, isn't really that practical. Although you can purchase equipment that will help you with that. And plenty of people do online gaming. Like I say, the online gaming, it's more about the download, not so much the upload. So it does depend on what you um, what you do for work, I guess. Um, and security wise, um, I have a lot of software on my computer for preventing all kinds of things. Obviously, when you are working from somewhere else, you're working on somebody's network. That network may not be secure. It is up to you as a, a freelancer to ensure you do your due diligence on, you know, the the what settings that that, that person or the Airbnb or the or private home that you're using has got on their router or their connection um, and to ensure you've got the relevant malware and uh, internet security in general, um, just as a, as a general rule. Perfect, thank you so much. Well, there's, there's lots of questions coming in for you. I'll, I'll ask the imposter syndrome one at the end for everyone because I think that's a really good one. Um, but I'll ask this one for the last one is how do you deal with the uncertainty of being a digital nomad? Yeah, so I'd say that I didn't, um, it, when you become a contractor, there's a, a bit of uncertainty. When I first started, I had to wait, I think a month or two months before I got my first gig, if you like. Um, <clears throat> and there's uncertainty of whether you're char whether you know you're charging the right amount, <clears throat> how long that contract will be for, um, and whether you'll meet the expectations of the client <laughs> effectively, um, especially when you're not used to doing it. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of when you are, like right now, whereas you used to go for a role that might be local to you, now I've had interviews where I'm literally one of 50 candidates for a single job. Um, and I think this is probably something interesting, maybe asking actual recruiters what they think, but it's like, um, as a candidate, that's uncertainty of whether you're going to be able to land a role. It links to the imposter syndrome really as to whether you feel confident to go into this and in your school and in your skill set, um, and how the current market is. Um, so I deal with it by being relaxed <laughs> because you can't guarantee anything. And I think the pandemic has told me that. Um, definitely a lot of things happened during that year. Nothing is certain. We have IR35 and other sort of tax laws and different things that could change at any minute that may make what something used to be viable no longer viable and it could be that I'm renting places in Scotland and all of a sudden you know there's a new law 
that you can't work from home in an Airbnb or something. There could be. And it could be already that that sort of thing exists in other countries. So it's, it's all a bit uncertain all the time, but I actually quite enjoy the uh, enjoy the ride. <laughs> I'm going to guess that the mountains help with staying relaxed as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I mean you got a, a certain amount of meditation required whether that's through yoga or climbing and, and you know clients will ask you to do things and you you may not necessarily uh you're you're there to do a job <laughs> and sometimes there's a healthy balance of challenging and just doing what you need to do that you've been asked to do and sometimes that can be tough but yeah, like I say, yeah, you're right. Mountains will definitely help. <laughs>